Today's computer models go gangbusters on what will be a blast of winter as we head into this upcoming weekend. We're talking about temperatures as low as 30 to 35 degrees below normal. Hi everybody, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice keeping you up to date along the way. Please let me know in the comment section where you're watching from. Like this video, subscribe, and turn on those notifications for more updates. Folks, yeah, both the European and the GFS model agree on a system that's weak but reinforces cold air Monday. That'll bring snow to some areas in North Carolina northbound and then then we get into next weekend, which the models say are going to be a doozy. I mean, we're talking about this big plume of polar Arctic air coming in out of the Midwest. Look at that, 35 to 40 degrees below uh, normal. Uh, some areas below zero. We're talking minus 15, minus 20 toward the upper Midwest. We're talking single digits in parts of Kentucky and Tennessee, and then teens from the Western North Carolina mountains south into upstate South Carolina. This is going to be a blast of cold air that the models are agree on, they just disagree on the timing a little bit, 12 to 24 hours of a difference on our reliable computer models. So let's start wide and just kind of show you what's happening right here. Please let me know where you're watching from right here as we continue to track this next brutal blast of cold air as I believe winter is rebooting here. I think it's kind of reloading and, and folks, we are off to uh, what is the coldest start uh, to winter and winter for meteorological terms is December 1st that we've had in 10 plus years in many areas on long the East Coast and record-breaking for some areas and toward the upper Midwest. Now, here we go into Thursday, Friday, another blast of cold air. And look at this, just little pieces of the polar vortex break off, move south, and the GFS model I'm showing you here ain't playing around, folks. I mean, it really brings in some serious cold to the Midwest, to the southeast, as far south as Florida. The entire East Coast in the chill, Saturday, Sunday, into Monday of this upcoming week. So we're talking about the 14th, 15th time frame within seven, eight days from here. And folks, it just doesn't let up. Now you see that ridge trying to build in from the West. We've seen that in the models. They've been trying to hint that we will eventually begin to warm up. However, the models will show it, then they'll back off a little bit with reinforcing shots of cold air coming in, but it does look like we at least get a pause, a pause of the coldest of the cold coming in around the 17th, 18th, 19th, but that does not last. Look at this, going into the 19th, 20th, we're right back to our old ways, the early December ways, where the East Coast is just primed for cold weather, and that could set up for a very, very cold couple of days leading up to Christmas here. So what would you like to see? Would you like to see it cold and wintry? Would you like to see it mild and dry? Well, it's going to be an interesting pattern to watch. Here is December 22nd. We've got a ridge trying to build back in, but at this length in time, the models do kind of average themselves out. So I showed you the GFS. Let's look closer at the European. It's right in lockstep. There's no big major differences with the models as far as timing, overall setup. So we have a signal here that it stays cold this week across the East Coast. And then going into this upcoming weekend, it doubles down, triples down, quadruples down. And look at this. I mean, the European... Uh, really showing a big blast of cold air as well. It too shows a little brief ridge or at least a break in the coldest of the cold, 15th, 16th, 17th. Then it brings in another big dip right here. And each of these could lead to snow chances along the eastern half of the United States where let's pan out. So folks, uh, looking at the European model all the way through, what's the snowpack going to be all the way through December 20th? It's got the Western North Carolina mountains, typical spot up through the Midwest, hit with a couple of different snowstorms. You flip it on over to the GFS model. Let me flip it over right here. It is a little bit more aggressive with the totals. It is also a little bit more aggressive with how far south it pushes, mainly I-40 corridor in North Carolina northbound. And a lot of that comes from a system that may take shape on Monday. Let's show you what's going on with this first system. Break it down town by town, state by state, so you know what to expect. No matter where you're watching right now, with the exception of maybe the West Coast, it's going to be cold in this upcoming week. Here we are Saturday into Sunday. It's just going to remain cold. I don't see us getting out of this wedge type environment where it's just cold kind of cloudy. Here we are into Monday. It is a fast moving upper level system which brings in a limited amount of moisture but reinforces cold air. So as this upper level system comes through, squeezes out just enough to give us a few flakes in western North Carolina. I don't expect a lot out of this but there will be some snow flying around on Monday morning through about lunchtime in parts of North Carolina. Now, similar to this past storm system, I don't expect much out of it, but it's something we'll watch. That moves off toward the east, and yeah, parts of eastern North Carolina could get in a little bit of snow action. 
Going into Tuesday, Wednesday's time frame, uh, the cold air continues to be reinforced, and here we are in the next week. You've got the polar areas open for business, and look at that steady stream with isobars. That is ushering in some serious cold air here from Canada, and that looks to be arriving. Look at that big, sprawling polar high pressure. Dry air, but cold air filtering in, and boy, it gets really, really cold going into that time frame. So we're going to have to watch that very closely. Where does it get? Who sees what? And what time does it get here? Let's break that down for you town by town right here and show you the different models. So Monday's storm system. The new NAM model does have us in on a little bit of interesting action as far as uh, who gets what going into this time frame of of going into, let me fix my map back here, uh, going into our time frame of Monday. It's got a little bit of snow from I-40 northbound, but it also brings that snow line just a little, little bit further south here into Charlotte, Mecklenburg. Could you see snow flying around in Charlotte? Yes. Will it really amount to very much or cause issues? Probably not. But I do want you to know that the latest NAM model, which does go back and forth a little bit, doesn't show a lot. Nothing more in the Carolinas or Virginia above two inches, but it does show a dusting to a half an inch in and around Charlotte, Lake Norman. Does that happen, Catawba County? No. I mean, I, I don't think you'll see a lot out of this, but it's an interesting trend to watch. Do the models stay like that? Let's look closer at the European model as it maps out that Monday system. It's a quick hit. I mean, I-40 looks to be a good bet. Uh, again, Catawba County, Hickory, east through Mooresville. I mean, we're, we're talking about a little bit of uh, snow flying around, but the issues, if there are any, would be mainly up toward the high country, and even there, it's not a lot. That system just reinforces the cold air this week, and here we go Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, pretty dry, awaiting our Friday system. This is a Friday night, Saturday system on the European. Quick hit of some moisture, rain for most, but then it's the cold air that settles in behind this, and this is some serious cold air, according to our European model. As we look at the European departure from normal, Look at this. As it comes on through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're all just so cold this week. I mean, there's not a day that's above normal, with exception maybe Wednesday by a degree or two. Thursday, we're moderating. Here we go Friday. Look at that cold air settling out of the Midwest. My, oh my. These are minus 20, minus 30 degrees below normal. So if normal for you is 58 degrees, your normal, your high for this time period, maybe next weekend, Saturday, would indicate you'd be 20 to 30 degrees colder than that. So 38 degrees it would be a good bet across many areas. So 30s for highs, teens and 20s for lows. And it looks like we do rebound a little bit, like I mentioned around the 15th, 16th. I don't think it's a, a, a torch moving up toward the north, bringing some warmer weather. But I do think we do moderate for at least a couple of days here for a warm batch here or there across the southeast. Meanwhile, the northeast cooling on down the 17th, 18th. Here comes the second blast that comes in 18th, 19th. And Overall, December just coming in really cold. Look, a little fire torch showing up in the models here, but we have seen this a couple of different times on the European and the GFS to some degree. The GFS is similar in timing, maybe about 12 hours delayed. It's more Saturday night versus versus uh, Friday night, Saturday morning. So it's about 12, 24 hours late, but it's more intense. It's about 30 to 35 degrees below normal, stretching all the way to the panhandle of Florida. I'll show you those numbers in just a moment. All of Florida, just in the in the freezer right here going into next weekend. I mean, this would be brutal, brutal cold. How cold, you might ask? Well, we're cold all week. I mean, there's no way around it. Single digits, teens up toward the Midwest and the Northeast, 20s and 30s for lows all the way far south. Here we go into next weekend. And notice those uh, gray white colors those are sub zero right here that's on the GFS and the European by as much as about minus 15 for parts of Wisconsin up through Iowa brutal brutal cold coming in here for Missouri Indiana sub zero for sure in those areas with the single digits getting in here to Kentucky, into Nashville, into East Tennessee. Even on this model, Saturday night going into Sunday, it's got actual temperatures two to five degrees above zero in western North Carolina, low teens in western parts of the upstate of South Carolina, Atlanta. Charlotte would be included in that as well. That would be for Sunday morning uh, going into the time frame here, minus four in Boone. 2 in Asheville and 15 in Greenville, 12 in Charlotte, 8 in Atlanta. 
This is brutal, brutal, brutal showing up on our models. High temperatures on that Saturday and Sunday would be in the 20s and 30s, way below. That's 30, 40 degrees below where we should be this time of the year. All right, back to the models here. The European not hinting at a lot of snow here, uh, mainly the high country. Though you may see it flying around along the I-40 corridor, it's mainly the mountains and it's not a lot. One to three inches on the models here from the European. You get toward the North Carolina, uh, Virginia line, get a little bit more, but not much. Let's look at the GFS's timing of this. As we go into Saturday, Sunday, we're cold, but we're dry. It's uh, Sunday night, Monday. It's got a quick hit of some snow in the mountains, a little bit of rain in the upstate through Georgia, and then it kind of snows here through Monday afternoon. So you may see it flying around at times, but it's not a lot. Then it kicks on out, and we have that dry week. And then coming in for next week's Arctic front, it's a quick hit of some cold rain for you know a little bit, not a lot, but it's really cold polar air that's dry. It's a quick hit, and we stay dry after that. And I don't see a good chance for rain in the next few days beyond the Arctic front that comes in. So GFS toll has got a couple of different looks here for you. It's a little bit more aggressive with uh, Monday snowfall. It's got as much as four to five inches across the high country of North Carolina, Boone. It's got about a half an inch in Asheville and Hickory. It keeps the I-40 corridor in about an inch to two. And it's got it flying around farther east uh, than, than the European model. Um, but it does be a little, it is a little bit more aggressive going into next weekend. As far as totals, through next weekend, it's got much of Indiana in the freezer as well as with some moisture with it. It's got a little bit more moisture compared to the European. It's sitting around five to 10 inches of snow for Northern Indiana into Ohio. Uh, same story for uh, parts of Illinois. And then going into uh, Pennsylvania, it's got quite a bit as well eight, nine, 10 inches of snow. Now this GFS model is a little bit of an outlier compared to the European, but let's look at closer at the GFS, kind of under the hood. This is the ensembles. What the ensembles say? Well, it's got a little quick hit of some snow here across North Carolina, similar to its operational run. It's also got uh, northern parts of Middle Tennessee and East Tennessee getting a little bit of snow out of this one on Monday. But really, as we go into next Saturday, Sunday's time frame, there is some support from the ensembles. The ensembles are basically running the model same way, just a little bit different here and there. That will allow temperatures uh, to be accounted for up or down, moisture up or down as well. And if you end up at the same result, you know you kind of got some meat behind those bones on the operational run. And for Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, we're talking two to five inches of snow, which is pretty close to what that operational was, uh, you know, more like six or seven. So it does bring down the average a little bit, but not by much. Here's the Canadian for what it's worth. Sometimes they can settle a dispute for the GFS or the European, and it's not too far off. It's got some snow for the upper parts of North Carolina, quick hit of rain in upstate South Carolina, and really it's just cold air coming in all week. May moderate Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday's time frame. Here comes that Arctic front. Some more snow breaking out toward Kentucky, up through West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York. That's the Arctic front itself, and it's got some quick hits of some other snow as well. So it's kind of in line there with the GFS model. Either way, it's just mighty, mighty cold on all of our computer models. So the, the Canadian models ensembles, very similar to the, uh, the the GFS, it does sink a little bit of white stuff flying around in upstate South Carolina. I think that's a bit of an anomaly on the other models. It also has at least you know two to five inches of snow, northern Illinois, northern Indiana, up through Ohio as well. So either way you slice it, almost all three of our reliable computer models do show some measurable snow. The ensembles, as far as probability is concerned, are, are, do a pretty good job. Who's going to see an inch of snow or more? Uh, the red would be almost a guarantee. That's a 90% chance through the time frame here. You get into northern parts of Kentucky, that's about an 80% chance through the time frame here. And let's just back it up a little bit, go through next weekend. Uh, Boone, 80, 90% 80, chance. Asheville, about a 50% chance of an inch or more. I-40 corridor, not looking likely. 10 to 20% chance right in here in North Carolina. So even if you do get snow, it's not enough to cause problems on Monday. It does, however, start to pick up on this Midwest blanket of snow as the Arctic front begins to move on in. And it does look like the GFS is right there in line with that as well. Pretty guaranteed to see at least an inch of snow or more in these northern parts, dipping down into the Appalachian Mountains. It, interestingly enough, though, does taper this off a little bit further south, you know, 10% chances on the South Carolina-North Carolina border. 
Again, those are those are common, very low odds, but it's something to watch out for here. So folks, what's on your mind? Let me know in the comment section where you're watching from right now. Let me know what you would like to see in this pattern here. Are you up for more cold air? Do you want to see a little bit of snow flying around? Well, keep it locked here. I promise to keep you posted through it. And let me know in the comment section where you're watching from. Like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and turn on those notifications. It is the best way to stay tuned. And folks, what I like to do at the end of each video is give a shout out for each of you that are watching. Uh, so next video, I will be doing that. So leave your comments right here. That'll help me uh, know where you're watching from. I'll give your town, your city, your state a, a shout out. And I'll answer your questions if you have any about the pattern moving forward. Interesting enough, it is going to be a wild pattern. Stay tuned, folks. I will keep you posted as the cold blast settles in this week.